I'm Lisa Hayden with Channel 6 Central Kentucky TV, Community Focus on Washington County. And we are delighted today to have the, the uh, Sidewalk Hall of Fame Award recipient from the Chamber of Commerce Banquet in uh, Springfield last night, Springfield, Washington County, Chamber of Commerce. And you're our first get award winner. That's the first guest. <laughs> the moment I said... We're going to get Sue on now tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. and Well, thank you. Congratulations to you on your mm -hmm. award. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So that's the Sidewalk Hall of Fame. So, you know, Sue, that means you've got your own brick that will be at on the sidewalk yeah. there at the 1816 courthouse mm -hmm. and um, so that's quite an honor. I, I really think that's quite an honor too. I'm kind of like of all the probably of all the awards you get that one's might be the most visible you know to the, to the public but not that not that I deserve to be the most visible I was very thankful to get it I I really I do nominal work with the Sorghum Festival compared to what I'm sure a lot of people do but I sponsored been sponsoring for the last few years the 5k with the uh, with Hale with Steve Hale and him and um uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun because it's a real energized group of people that come in at six o'clock in the morning to sign up and and run the 5k and we're part of that triple crown deal where they they run in lebanon they run in bardstown and then they the grand finale is here in washington county so it's kind of a big ceremony they, they it's kind of good that we are last because it draws a little bit bigger crowd to come in and to finish it out like that because they get a separate trophy for for running the triple crown right right the triple races yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah triple crown they call it and okay. that's great and and so sue you know because the award is um you know given to someone who as you indicated participates uh who helps the chamber uh in the um at the sorghum mm -hmm. festival every year that the chamber sponsors and so you, I imagine, <clears throat> have uh, not only uh, supported it by sponsoring the 5K, uh, I imagine you've been involved in other ways in the mm -hmm. past as well. <laughs> I've run it, you know, about every year. This year I did not run it. For some reason, I don't know, we were um, – Lizzie Hayden was working with me, and we got down there. We kind of got pretty busy registering everybody and stuff. And Liz, Lizzie uh, – <clears throat> Lizzie Hayden. Um, Which one? The John and Roses. Okay. Lizzie Hayden was working in my office. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She came down and, and we both helped kind of register people. And sometimes you kind of get involved in, in that and talking with the people and things and cheering them on that it's like, oh, I'd kind of kind of sit on the sidelines this year and just and watch and be there when they cross the finish line it was yeah. it was a fun race Tobin Sheila Yankees grandson crossed the finish line first I think he was like 10 or 11 years old oh so it was uh and he was followed up by uh Christopher Jewell so it was a it was a fun race yeah. and and it's something that we you don't think of it needing very many volunteers for it but really you do and it's a very easy simple thing but at each one of the intersections like throughout town where they're making turns whether it be up on Grundy or Covington they they need somebody there to direct the the traffic so you know if you live in those areas and you just want to sit outside and watch the runners go by for you know 15 or 20 minutes it's a fun it's a fun thing to do and yeah. uh, you know you can get your volunteerism like that and really not have to do a whole lot either yeah yeah Plugging volunteers mm -hmm. already yeah. <laughs> for the fall, yeah. uh, the, yeah. for, which for, will be in October, the first weekend in October, mm -hmm. uh, will be our Sorghum Festival, and that'll be here before you know it. Yeah. And I know that, you know, the Chamber's already making plans mm -hmm. uh, for that. And uh, so it was really a nice award ceremony. It was. And, and of course, Sue, they recognize you uh, for your uh, involvement with the Sorghum mm -hmm. Festival, but you've also been a Chamber member, mm -hmm. and... And uh, with your um, with shelter insurance, with shelter insurance, mm -hmm. and um, then you have been involved in the community mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. <laughs> and as you said last night, which I just thought was very, um, a very, uh, very nice to say, and and uh, I know how you feel in that regard. And you said you had been asked to uh, live, uh, mm -hmm. or, or or said people. Right. Have, family member, you know, that lives. I have family in Lexington and family in Louisville. And, you know, for the last probably 10 or 12 years, they've been like, Sue, you know, why don't you come come to Lexington or come to Louisville? There's more, you know, more opportunities. It's fun. You'll be down here. And I'm and it's it. 
I even looked at a house one time in Versailles when I was working in Frankfurt because I was like, oh, this drive back and forth. I was like, I think I'll just maybe move to Versailles. And uh, it just, it wouldn't matter. It was just not home. Couldn't do it. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll keep driving, commuting, because um, this, this really is home. And I like it here. I have no, no desire to, to go anywhere else. Yeah. Well, of course, you were born here mm-hmm. and raised here. Mm-hmm. So your mom uh, is deceased mm-hmm. now, bless her heart. And she it hadn't been too yeah. long. No. It, well, actually, it's been 12 years now. What? I know it. 2007. So your mom was? Um, mom was Roberta Mudd. Carico McIntyre, yeah. and uh, we grew up the third house from the bottom on Covington, and now I live the third house from the top on Covington. I tell people I, I live in the OJR Montgomery house on Covington. That usually resonates a lot of memories with people, and uh, I used to clean that house when I was nine years old. Uh, I started working cleaning house when I was nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, actually, and I worked for Paul and Francis Hamilton, and then I worked for J.R. Montgomery, and um uh, those Sarah were the, Wathen. Those yeah. were the days when kids uh, worked when they. Yeah, were. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we we I went and straight there after school. Yeah, yeah. made a dollar an hour, <laughs> and uh, primarily worked for Paul and Francis. But if Paul yeah. and Francis didn't need me, then Sarah Wathen would always say, "Okay, send her down here." You know, so I would go, and little did I ever ever dream I would someday live in that house so it just shows you truly how God works in your life like he knew when I was nine years old that when I was 49 years old I was going to be living in that house and sure enough and then even how that came about uh it was an Easter Sunday in 2008 and Elmerita my sister and I were walking we were going over to to our old house to kind of do some cleaning on it and uh Walked by the, the house, Jeremy Montgomery's right there on Covington, and I looked up at it, and I said, gosh, you know, it doesn't look like the Goatleys have, you know, <laughs> no offense, Greg and Margaret, it looked like they'd mowed the yard. It was kind of like things. Did. And they were, Emery to my sister said, oh, they haven't lived there for like a year and a half. And I said, you mean the house has been empty for a year and a half? And she said, yeah. So went home Easter Sunday night. I called Greg. I said, hey, Greg, you want to sell that house? Him and Margaret in about 15 minutes said, if you want it, yep, we'll sell it. And so that's how it all, they'd never even put it up for sale. Yeah. They'd never even listed it. Yeah. So once again, just shows you how you never know. It's a great where house your life, too. It is a great house. I know. Isn't it funny? It's just like full oh, circle. Oh, it is. And it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very blessed. And so, um, so then, of course, you uh, attended um uh, Washington County schools? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or? Went to St. Dominic all my Went life. Went to St. Uh-huh. Dominic. St. Dominic all, 12, all eight years, rather. Mm-hmm. And then Washington County High School. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be honest, though, I I had not worked in Springfield since 1990, since 1990 until I came back and worked for Shelter um, in 2016. Yeah. So for 26 years, I was either I was a stay at home mom for five years of that. Mm -hmm. And then I worked over in Marion County and then went from Marion County to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. So I had not. So that's even that even makes it even better because I hadn't worked in this town for 26 years. And now I Mm -hmm. really feel like I'm back home to be able to have an office, have a business here in town to live here and um, one of my sons lives here. One, my daughter lives in Lexington. My other son lives in Lebanon, which is still not far away. And um, yeah, so it's. I really feel like I'm back home, being yeah. being able to work here. Well, and you got El Marita close by. She's oh yeah, just a few blocks away. Uh-huh. And, uh, and you have a brother that yeah. lives Fletcher, my brother Fletcher McIntyre. He lives here in town. Yeah. Or well, I didn't live in town, but he lives in Washington County. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you've got a lot of family mm-hmm. here still. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the older you get, I think even your friends become so much more like family. Mm-hmm. You know, you you just. You know, my friend Mary Lynn Fenwick at the bank and Angela Medley. You know, we just, the people I go to church with, well, Laura Justice for last, you know, for example, she's the one that presented me with the award. And I met her about 10 years ago at church and just hit it off. And and honestly, you know, she's like a sister. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. you, you do develop, I think your relationships as friends, the older you get, they become as much like family as family. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and Sue, you have had such a diverse uh, career. <laughs> I always get t- tickled on that. And last night, here you were at the at the banquet, uh, recruiting bus drivers. <laughs> 
<laughs> because we do need bus drivers, and it's a wonderful job. And you said, if if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, I'm just going to tell you, Sue, you, you've had a farm life. <laughs> So you've probably driven tractors and everything uh-huh. else, have you? Oh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. but there's really, I mean, you know, unless you want to compare a school bus driving to herding cattle, <laughs> that might be more like it. But um, but it, I think I always, I just think, I haven't, I, you know, I thought, well, I'll pass Sue on the road mm-hmm. one day with, in that bus with those children. Mm-hmm. And I and she, you don't look any bigger than the children. <laughs> And I thought, well, I don't even know how she sees over that steering wheel. So but it works. <laughs> so I figured if Sue can do it, she, if she, uh-huh. she's right. Anybody can do it. So they can. Well, you put in a plug for bus Yeah, there we go. Sue. Hey, there's. Uh, I think it's uh, 859-336-5470. And uh, get yourself started with getting a CDL. Honestly, and that was another kind of an odd thing. Um I, when I left Frankfurt, kind of took a leap of faith, really didn't have a job, but bus driving over at Marion County hired me and uh, got that CDL and was doing that and thought, I'll be so, you know, I really never was a fan of school, even when I went to school. But so I got this CDL and uh, all that training for it and was like, okay, I'm so done with school. I'm not doing anything else. Well, it wasn't two weeks and I get a call from Shelter that they were recruiting recruiting in town and wanted to know if I wanted to come in for an interview with them and I was like well I was doing handyman jobs at the time like pressure washing houses repairing concrete and driving a school bus and I was kind of thinking whoo it wasn't paying very good and I was like I don't know how long my body can keep you know climbing these ladders and pressure washing houses and stuff so I thought when they called for the recruiting for the uh, shelter insurance and then they told me I had to get licensed. I was like, oh, gosh, I got to go back to I got to learn again. <laughs> so anyway, I got the books back out and got my licensing. Well, and you and, and prior to that, you were in Frankfurt with the uh, Department of Agriculture. Department of Agriculture. For, mm-hmm. um, I was there for 10 years with them, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. a chicken bleeder so went all over the state drawing blood off chickens yeah and and wrote grants and yeah so Mm -hmm. some days i tell people all the time i would be like in and it was really a good job i would be in uh boots and coveralls testing chickens and then the next day literally in heels and pearls in frankfurt (laughs) writing a grant or you know managing grants and and budgets yeah so it was it truly was the best of both worlds Yeah. yeah yeah Yeah. Reverse. Yes. Well, and now, Sue, you've moved your office from mm-hmm. uh, up here uh, on 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 West Main mm-hmm. to East Main. Yes. Now that uh, is where um, it's an old historic mm-hmm. home. Right. Built in 1835. It's a log home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people refer to it still as the Bennett R. Lewis. He was a superintendent here in Washington County for years, and so they consider it the Bennett R. Lewis house. But it is a log a log home, and my son David owned it prior to me buying it. And he is on the back side, if you're ever in town, want to come up there and look at it. In the back, he uncovered, uh, took the clapboard off, and exposed the logs and rechinked mm-hmm. them, and it is, it is beautiful. It was built there, Joe Floyd lived there for about 12 years, or didn't live there, had his office there for about 12 years. And he was telling me that, you know, it was there when the Battle of Perival went on. Over 17,000 troops, you know, went through Washington County, right there on Main Street, uh, on their way to Perival, and went right past that house. It was it was there at that time. Yeah. So it's really a, a neat, and I have my office there, and then, not to jump the gun, but I have an Airbnb that I run out of it on the weekend. Yeah. So, um, and that's in the back, correct? That's, it's, well, it's the upstairs. There's, okay. a, there's a nice good size bedroom and den upstairs Mm -hmm. and then you come downstairs and there's the bathroom and the kitchen Mm -hmm. so they have the bathroom the kitchen a den and a bedroom as part of it and i just lock off our offices Uh and uh, then i rent an office space to todd and tona smith so they have an office in there too they work from home but they said you know it actually it kind of creates an atmosphere that helps them to function a little better if they come to an office Mm -hmm. and uh, so I had that extra room and so they rent that from me downstairs and so we just all lock off our offices on the weekends and I posted it put the pictures on December 1st on Airbnb and on December 2nd we had our first people (laughs) booking and there's never been an empty weekend since wow yeah 
That's great. It it is it is. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Well, you have one as yep. well, yep. so. Yeah, I do. And it it is. Um, you know, it's fun too. Uh-huh. It is because fun. it's amazing the people that come to oh. Springfield, and uh, now of course a lot of them are on the Bourbon Trail. That's exactly. Yeah, I would bet ninety percent of them yeah. are on the Bourbon Trail. Yeah, yeah. So that's very good for Springfield. Mm-hmm. It is. It and is. And hopefully, before very long, we'll have our own uh, distillery. Of course, mm-hmm. Michter's has started their um, uh, warehouse and Bourbon warehouse and um mm-hmm. and barrel uh, warehouse so anyway yeah. hopefully in the future you know we'll have a tasting room and uh-huh. gift shop and all kinds right. of things yeah but but even even before that like you said there's you know they the when i was there cleaning up on sunday from the people that were there this weekend there was snappy tomato boxes in the in yeah. the trash so they're you know they're yeah. still eating local and and uh, right. always want to kind of know always, they love the fact of the community theater some have attended some of the theater performances so there's yeah. they're even doing things here while they're yeah while they're here oh, on yeah. the bourbon trail and they always eat at mordecai yeah and they want to go yeah <laughs> they go to mordecai so there's it's yeah. a it's it's just really it like you said they come from all over um, and people don't even realize just how mm-mm. many you know i think we i mean all over the world i've had yeah. people from all over the world mm-hmm. my uh well and i didn't even think of doing the airbnb my son david he's the one that said mom you ought to put an airbnb in uh-huh. and i thought oh there won't be 10 people a year use that thing and yeah. honestly like i said since december i've not had an open weekend yet still don't i'm booked through something like may now and and have some randomly booked all the way out until like you know august and november they'll yeah. just book them out had one lady uh she was booking for 2020 because her daughter was graduating from center college so she wants one for may 2020 wow a weekend Mm-hmm. Well, that's so it's, <laughs> it's that's great, isn't it? It is yeah. good. Yeah. So, so Sue, you know, I know that too. You've been involved, you know, with uh, uh, your church, mm-hmm. River of Life, uh-huh. and um, and then uh, well, Saint Dominic right. one time. Yeah. Lots and of- uh, so you, I know you've been involved in a lot of capacities, and of course, you ran for office. <laughs> And needless to say, you know, we were terribly disappointed. I, I mean, you would have been a great magistrate, mm-hmm. Sue. Oh, there's days I'm not going to. There's days I do think, why didn't I finish out? Go ahead and do that. Um, you know, at the time I was kind of thinking, oh, gosh, I'm just not a political person. I still kind of think maybe the fiscal court should be like nonpartisan, kind of like, like city mm-hmm. council is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to say sit here and say oh i made the best decision by not staying in that uh, i might should have but i didn't and and life goes on and we all learn sometimes that uh you know that is one thing that well, we should do yeah. is maybe think a little harder before we make decisions sometimes but yeah you know um again kind of like living in the jr montgomery house you know you never know where your life's going to be and and i i don't look back with any regret mm-hmm. you know but uh, probably probably could have won it you know in in the fall if i had a mm-hmm. and, and it wasn't that i was afraid of not winning it i just kind of was like i just i felt that i felt a uh, i don't know just a pressure of politics that and not that anybody had had pressured me anything i just uh anyway it's just a decision and and it's worked out mm-hmm, kenny mm-hmm. harden will do a great job over there mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. uh our district and i've already actually noticed stuff out on what would have been my area roads being fixed and they and we do have a very good court system over there uh, and i can speak for that just from driving the school bus because we have to have turnarounds obviously you got to turn around this big thing when you get to the end of some of <laughs> these roads right. and i can call dale man and say hey dale my turnaround needs a load of rock and within the week, mm-hmm. he has got me a load of rock on that turnaround. Mm-hmm. And uh, because we're we're basically turning around on people's private property, mm-hmm. you know they they allow us to do that. And um, so there is a maintenance needs there that all have right. to be met. Yeah. And with all the rain we've had, it's it's difficult to keep rock in place and stuff. So yeah, but yeah. but yes, and and I'm I'm actually very thankful that when I when I was running, I I only missed like three fiscal court meetings from January when I signed up until mm-hmm. whenever it was June, July that mm-hmm. I withdrew mm-hmm. uh, and learned just a lot. I, that's one thing I do encourage people. Nobody goes to those meetings, but they are they're not boring. 
they really uh-huh. you can mm-hmm. learn a lot and uh, I'm not saying you have to go to every single one of them twice a month, but heck, hit one every once a month or once every two months, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it makes it makes the council, the court rather, feel good that people mm-hmm. do have an interest mm-hmm. and that they want to come and see what's going on in their. County. I'm hoping I'm hoping they're going to start filming it. Our, oh. with our new judge executive start filming it on Channel mm-hmm. 6. Mm-hmm. Marion County uh, does. Because yeah. Marion County does and Nelson County does. And really, I, you know, turn those on mm-hmm. and, and and get a lot of good information. I've them. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I would, you know, it'd be good if we could get those on uh, as well here. And, um, but, you know, Sue, there are politics, of course, and everything. Shoot, there's politics oh. in the school system. Yes. You know, there's politics everywhere. When people We'll talk about politics. Yes. There's politics and insurance. I mean, it, yeah. sometimes I get an underwriter yeah. to float my way, and sometimes she won't, you yeah. know. So yeah. there's... But but basically, when when whoever gets on the fiscal court, re- regardless, Democrat, Republican, mm-hmm. Independent, your party affiliation doesn't make much difference. It doesn't. You're right. Because the fiscal court does work together in a nonpartisan way, yes. uh, you know, to... Um, to take care of the needs of mm-hmm. Washington County. They really do. Yeah. And, and I saw that when I was there. Not once, not once in my seven months of going to those meetings did I ever see anything that would make you think that there was a political preference or that there was yeah. any kind of uh, partisism, part, um, favoritism. So I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Favoritism given to any party, per mm-hmm. se. Right. So, no, it was they really they worked together. You know, mm-hmm. they knew what they were doing. We yeah. we had a good we had a good court yeah. on there, and I'm I, I am a little disappointed myself that I haven't been up there to one since mm-hmm. they since mm-hmm. the new system. Mm-hmm. But I'll get up there because I do like watching. Well, them. you would have been good, so mm-hmm. maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll reconsider. Maybe you'll reconsider. So oh, I probably and, committed political suicide when I withdrew. But and, <laughs> and you know, uh, too, I've I'm always you know we need we need women. Mm-hmm. There's no women representation yeah. on there. Not that that makes any difference right. in regard to the decisions made, but we do need a women's point of view. Yeah. It, we do. Think <laughs> There's no women on our That's fiscal right. court. Yeah, I don't think there is a Nelson or the, the last time uh, Nelson or uh, Marion either. Yeah. and I don't really so. know the reason behind mm-hmm. that. And and uh, I, I have to be honest, I would have liked to have have fulfilled that role. I would have liked mm-hmm. to have, to mm-hmm. have done that. I've served on lots of different mm-hmm. committee yeah, things, and kind of just because of my diverse background, mm-hmm. kind of know a little bit about machinery. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were talking backhoes and caterpillars and yeah. some of that st- bush hogs. <laughs> I did kind of know what some of that stuff all was and what contracts mean yeah. and grants yeah. and, uh, you know, in-kind when, when a county has to put in in-kind contribution to a mm-hmm. grant, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So it, it is it So is you were pretty knowledgeable in a lot of diverse ways. And, of course, you know, you lived on a farm mm-hmm. and raised your children mm-hmm. on, on a farm. farm. and Very thankful to have done that. And so, you know, you even though you were a city girl, uh-huh. I yeah, guess, I was. you <laughs> certainly learned mm-hmm. you know about farm life mm-hmm. and so you really do have a good diverse background mm-hmm. and so but anyway just yeah. something to think about go. in the future that's right <laughs> and uh and so we're just happy that you uh received this award I am too. thank you and uh we know that um we'll see you at the sorghum festival in the fall yeah. if not before uh on Main Street, I'm going mm-hmm. to uh, tell people to come by and see that office. Yes, please. Say the, or it, book a room. Or book a room. There you go. It, it really is, uh, you know, it's the... To my knowledge, we've been. T- it's the. It's not the oldest house in Washington County, but the oldest house in town, in, yeah. in actually in the city limits of Springfield. Like I said, uh, 1835, 1836. And yeah. it used to be two separate houses. It was, and, and there was like a breezeway so to speak in between joe was telling me one side was uh like the parents and the kids and the other side was the grandparents which was they just had the one room and where you come in my front door that was all open and that was not closed in until later on and then then the then it was joined together but originally it was two separate houses that's why because the interior walls in that house are are log as well and that was how that that was that was figured out and they're the great big logs between those two offices that breeze weight so the logs um that's how they knew this this was originally two separate two, houses yeah mm-hmm. 
Cool. Yeah, it is. Well, I've been in there, and it's, I mean, I haven't since you mm -hmm. put your office there, but I'll be down. Yeah, well, please so, do. Yeah. Okay. So thanks again on mm -hmm. your um, you. being here, and congratulations on your award. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to seeing your brick installed <laughs> on the on the sidewalk hall of fame thank you and we, and by the way there were a lot of good award winners last night oh yeah. it was a it was a very very well laura for her first banquet did a did an amazing job her and pat rose working together to put that thing and it was and there were a lot of a yeah. very uh well-deserving people yeah. that received awards last night it yeah. was nice they'll be on the show next yeah good deal <laughs> <All right>. thanks <laughs> thanks lisa <laughs>